What is interventional psychiatry and how would it look like to be inside an interventional psychiatrist's office in 2030? Welcome to Mind Wellness by Dr. Era. Let's take a look at the future. Hi, my name is Dr. Era Data, and I'm a consultant psychiatrist practicing primarily online based out of Kolkata. And I'm the founder of Mind Wellness. This whole series of uh, videos, especially PPT based presentations, is for you if you are a psychiatrist and it's for you if you're interested in psychiatry, especially the recent updates. And today, I'm going to give you a very special sneak peek, sneak peek into an interventional psychiatrist's office in 2030. Yes. Now, disclaimer welcome to the future, but I cannot foresee the future. I do not have the magical powers to look into the future. However, I do have a vision and I do believe that hopefully uh, with time that this vision can come true because I'm a big optimist other than being a psychiatrist. Uh, also disclaimer, I'm not an interventional psychiatrist, but I have attended a, a workshop at NIMHANS for three days for hands-on learning of uh, non-invasive brain stimulation, which is another big part of being an interventional psychiatrist. So please bear with the optimist in me. My wishful thinking of 2030 is that we live in a world where first of all, psychiatry gets the due that it deserves, uh, where hopefully the stigma is gone, by by stigma, where hopefully we have a lot of awareness about mental health, where mental health checkups become mandatory and not optional. As much as you go to your physical checkup every year, once a year, maybe you can go for a mental health checkup maybe every three months or four months, just to see if everything is a okay I also foresee a future where mental health becomes mainstream and the government starts taking it with a lot more interest and uh, more GDP spent on it. And like I said, in 2030, I hope we have better and more suitable guidelines to give mental health and equality for all, which was the World Health theme in 2021. So what does the future of psychiatry withhold Let's take a sneak peek. Here are some of the things. Who is an interventional psychiatrist really? That is the big question on the table. So interventional psychiatry is an emerging subspeciality of psychiatry. Psychiatry, as you know, is uh, the branch of medicine where uh, after five and a half year of MBBS in India, we study three years of uh, MD medicine, the MD, uh, sorry, MD psychiatry, the MD psychiatry. Some people do a diploma in psychiatry, but it's a subspeciality of medicine and in uh, psychiatry itself, interventional psychiatry is an emerging subspeciality of psychiatry. The basis of which lies in the fact that there is a dysfunctional brain circuitry which underlies all psychiatric disorders. And hence, we can apply brain stimulation techniques so as to modulate that circuitry. And we basically utilize a lot of neurotechnology. So I like to think that it is the matrix of psychiatry where technology meets the nervous system, if you may. Currently, a psychiatrist's toolbox or armamentarium primarily comprises of number one, pills, number two, talk therapy. In fact, sadly, a lot of psychiatrists are called pill pushers. Uh, some of the psychiatrists don't even practice psychotherapy. A lot of them do. I personally love adding uh, psychotherapy to medication or only going for psychotherapy where it's required. Uh, hopefully we can add to our armamentarium in the future. We also have other few things in our armamentarium at the moment. For example, ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. Most people would roll their eyes when I say the word ECT, not knowing that it is life-saving. It has really good effects to it. It can be very beneficial. So let's not write it off uh, altogether. And I will do a separate uh, video on ECT or electroconvulsive therapy altogether. But for now, these are what we have in our armamentarium. So what does it mean to practice interventional psychiatry? And is this really truly an emerging subspeciality? And how has it really evolved? Let's take a look. Honestly, psychiatrists are not new to intervention. We've been doing it for very long. We started with uh, you know, injecting camphor oil to induce seizures. Uh, then there were these ECT machines like Hugo Cerelletti was the first one in 1938 to have some intervention, which was in the form of this ECT machine, which is uh, saved in, the, uh, in a museum in Europe. Over the period of time, FDA has approved the following interventions in psychiatry. One is VNS, which is vagal nerve stimulation uh, for 
adjunctive treatment of depression. This was in 2005. We got the FDA approval. Then there is TMS, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation, 2008. Uh, deep TMS for refractory depression, which was recently in 2013. And then there is deep brain stimulation, which is more a neurosurgeon's domain. But of course, a psychiatrist, interventional psychiatrist has to first get all the boxes ticked for somebody to be really uh, able to go through DBS, especially in OCD. So what really led to the growth of interventional psychiatry, if you ask? First and foremost, the recognition that all neuropsychiatric conditions are a product of brain circuit dysfunction. And, and we keep saying that, oh, it's all in your mind. The reality is it is in your mind. These are neuro circuits in your mind. All depression, anxiety, all of these disorders are actual manifestation of the neuropsychiatric uh, dysfunction in the brain circuitry. Second is the need for rapid relief of symptoms, which some of these interventions can provide. And third is to break out of the concept of IPDs or indoor patient facilities, or to break out from the concept of the asylum thought that, you know, we need to move into more office-based setups and where supervision can be done for a day procedure rather than, you know, staying for there for a few days or weeks. We've also relied heavily on measurement-based care using valid measures. So now we know that if somebody's having depression, psychosis, or anxiety, uh, OCD, how long have they been at that level? Have they shown any improvement? Have they not shown any improvement? The rise in treatment resistance in most of the psychiatric disorders, which is 30 to 40% cases, has led to the need for intervention. And a lot of patients out there who decide that they want alternative treatments. They don't want to rely on the medication. They don't want to sit down for therapy. So they want other ways. That has fueled the growth of interventional psychiatry. Interventions uh, in psychiatry have been proven, especially non-invasive brain stimulation method, the ones I mentioned that FDA has given us approval of, um, of that TMS, RTMS, and uh, of TDCS. Uh, there is very good evidence for depression, OCD, chronic pain, a lot of movement disorders, substance abuse, and epilepsy seizures uh, propagation as well. So we have robust data supporting all of this. So in a nutshell, to recap, interventional psychiatrists are super specialists, which uh, uh, focus on modulating dysfunctional brain networks, but without any surgery or with just minimally invasive or non-invasive procedures. These are all office-based office, office -based, uh, procedures. Ideally, in 2030, a psychiatrist, especially an interventional psychiatrist, should work as a team with a neurologist, with a neurosurgeon, and an anesthetist on board. What kind of uh, services would an interventional psychiatrist provide? So there are two main uh, categories, therapeutic neuromodulation, which involve devices, and uh, then there are medication therapies that require uh, monitoring. So in the ones involving devices also, there are ones which induce seizure and the ones which do not induce seizure. And then on the other hand, there are ones which uh, require the medication monitoring. Ketamine is a very famous one. We will talk about it briefly and the other medication then. Seizure. I know it sounds scary, but these are controlled seizures. Uh, ECT is the most commonly used one and far more robust data than anything put together because it's been there for many, many, many years. So electroconvulsive therapy, it is not the way they show it in movie. Uh, it is not scary. You do not become a zombie. You do not get hurt. These are all myths. And I will hopefully do another separate video on ECT, like I said earlier. Then there is MST, which is magnetic seizure therapy. And the newest is FEAST, which is focally, uh, focally electrically administered stimulation, which is being looked into still. And then there are these non-seizure induced using the devices. These are the ones I got trained in, TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, especially RTMS, that is a repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. Then there is ETNS, which is external trigeminal nerve stimulation, TDCS, uh, again, very, very useful, affordable, so small, portable. And then there is uh, transcutaneous uh, auricular vagus nerve uh, stimulation that is also there. Now, the medications which are being looked into, particularly, especially in the interventional psychiatry realm, are FDA's approved esketamine, which is uh, a nasal or a uh, you know spray form of uh, ketamine. Then there is uh, a, 
wonder drug called allopregnolone, which is very useful in postpartum depression in women. So he had to discover these and that. Ketamine, and then there is psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Again, I will talk briefly about it, but I will talk in detail about this as well. Uh, in a separate video, I am covering the NIBS, which is the non-invasive brain stimulation. So the Vegas, uh, uh, so uh, the VNS, the uh, RTMS, and the TDCS will be covered in a separate video. Let's talk about the ketamine clinics. The ketamine clinics are becoming ever so popular, and the ketamine infusion for treatment-resistant depression patients is in vogue at the moment. In fact, there are many studies from our country showing that the efficacy of ketamine therapy is really good for treatment resistant depression uh, some have said that these are there are high hopes for this wonder drug the only thing is uh, abuse potential uh, then you know it's a drug that you can't just get easily which is a good thing because some people can get high on it if used not the right way for recreational purposes it can be used uh, in usa at the moment there are ketamine clinics where you can walk in where you can get hooked to the iv or different forms and uh, explore the wonder wondrous feeling that comes with ketamine infusion. Uh, of course, a doctor has to sign up that you have treatment-resistant depression. You just can't go in and say, oh, I have depression. Can you give me some ketamine? There are stricter guidelines being formulated at the moment. This is uh, the nasal spray of the ketamine that I was mentioning about, uh, Sprato, and uh, definitely we are looking at different uses. I've not personally uh, had the chance to put it in my professional use so far, but hopefully. And in the very near future, we can not ignore the role of PAP, which is the psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, which is a major paradigm shift, if you ask me, in psychiatric research and development. Game changer, if, if you may. Of course, uh, the limited research is there, but the research is seeming promising. Now, this is not just writing drugs for people. It's actually about combining the explanation, the diagnostics, and the therapeutics. And it's a holistic treatment, which looks at a multi-dimensional approach. And yes, ketamines like ket uh, PAPs, uh, like ketamine, MDMA, psilocybin, which is the magic shroom as psychoactive component, LSD, ibogaine, all have been going through a lot of trials all around the world. I'm excited. Are you excited? about the role of interventional psychiatry, if you are a psychiatrist or if you're somebody who's interested uh, to know about how psychiatry is in changing form, then yes, we are all excited, but wait, don't get too excited. The reason being because, especially in our country in India or in other third world countries or in South countries, uh, we need more formal training. We need more fellowships. We need more specialized centers. We need better standardization of care. We need better practice guidelines. And maybe we can even make it a part of PG program because I was only able to get some of uh, the hands-on experience after I finished my postgraduate program. There are very few centers in our country where uh, the devices that I was mentioning earlier or where some of these are available because uh, it requires a lot of uh, investment. Our TMS machine can cost upwards of a lakh and uh, the TDCS, even though it is cheaper, but a lot of uh, screening needs to be done, a lot of... Uh, manpower is required to monitor. So definitely only major institutes at the moment have hands-on approach for uh, non-invasive brain stimulation method in psychiatry, but we are looking at neuromodulation centers coming up in private setups as well. We need to develop interventional psychiatry as a subspeciality in our country. It is the need of the hour, I must say. So we need better fellowship programs to begin with. If you are somebody who's finished your uh, five and a half years of MBBS in India, three years of your MD psychiatry, and are now looking at interventional psychiatry fellowship program. There is one at NIMHAN. Uh, I believe there is one seat last I checked. Uh, you may have to do your own research, but the fellowship is uh, a hands-on program for one year in NIMHAN where you get a lot of training. CIP Ranchi is trying to run programs, which are smaller programs and not fellowship programs, but definitely, again, a very good center. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have more in the future all around the world. Stanford is doing a, a, an international uh, fellowship. I uh, believe that what they are focusing on are ECT, TMS, VNS, CDCS, DBS, and a typical week at Stanford's uh, International Psychiatry Fellowship Program would look somewhat like this. You'd be learning ECT, you'd be learning TMS, you'd be doing rounds, uh, you'd be you know, doing a lot of uh, morning meetings, a lot of discussions. 
the realistic questions in our country are things like addressing if rtms equipments which are so expensive or all of these non invasive methods are introduced who will cover the cost because uh, the major population still doesn't have enough resources the pandemic has hit the world wide uh, really badly so we have to look into whether insurance will have any role to play when it comes to covering these new interventions in psychiatry even psychedelic assisted psychotherapy for that matter we need to create more awareness because not enough people know that there is more to psychiatry than just writing medication and therapy in fact you'd be surprised that so many psychiatrists do not refer patients to the centers or to other doctors who provide these because of either lack of knowledge or uh, the fear that they don't know how this will transpire so we need more acceptance by the patients by the psychiatrists by other doctors for sure we need to build up a lot more awareness and this is a video meant at even awareness we need better training at the sub specialty in pg curriculum or post pg courses for specific sub specialized training in this specialty uh this is my picture from 2016 uh i hope you can spot me that's me and uh, i was fortunate enough to be selected for the first ever uh, nibs uh, training in the country at nimhans and after that they've conducted many so definitely this is one great way to uh, get into the hands on training method if you want and you're a psychiatrist you can keep looking out for the nimhans website and circular by the ips that is the indian psychiatric society hopefully a private setup in the future will have an rtms machine it's becoming more affordable for clinicians a uh, tdcs machine that's the one in the middle how it looks like and psychedelic assisted psychotherapy so that's my vision for 2030 all i want you to know is that if you're a psychiatrist if you're a doctor who's plan to become a psychiatrist uh, if you are somebody who battles with depression anxiety or any other major mental health disorder and wants to know what's happening in the realm of uh, psychiatry so newness or updation know that interventional psychiatry is here to stay we have to develop it we have to focus on more specialized training and awareness and this is the future and it's here to stay thank you so much i believe that i'm going to do a couple of more videos and link them once i do it on ect on nibs which is non invasive brain stimulation and i'll keep doing more educational videos i get more support from you all thanks